Hello, I'm Nafis Ali, and today we'll be discussing about the history of the Red Alarm. I'll be discussing about, about its history, the rolling stock which is used, stations, and extensions. So tune in. Attention passengers, the next red line train to action is now approaching. The next Brentford train arrives in 10 minutes. The Red Line opened in 1912 as the Cambridge Dorchester Line, which ran from Cambridge to all the way to Dorchester via Boston. At the time, this wasn't called the Red Line. Now, let me explain. Now, the Cambridge Dorchester Line was opened by the Boston Elevated Railway, which already had the Orange Line, Green Line, and Blue Lines which were already running, which was a ginormous success of transit in Boston. So the BER wanted a train which would run from Cambridge all the way to Dorchester. Now, original plans was that the line would start from Harvard Square ter Terminal, run underground underneath Massachusetts Avenue and Main Street, run surface along Longfellow Bridge, then enter a tunnel, then terminate at Park Street, where the line could connect with the trim green line. Although this was delayed because due to the resident residents of Cambridge, led by Mayor, Mayor Wardwell, wanted at least five intermediate stations to be built between Harvard and Park Street because the distance between Harvard and Park Street was pretty much very long and so at least they wanted one intermediate stop which would be built at Central. So with this, construction of the line began in 1909. Starting from Harvard Square Terminal, the line went underneath Massachusetts Avenue making two stops at Central, then continuing on Main Street, making a stop at Kendall. Then the line went on surface level, crossing the Longfellow Bridge, then entering the tunnel, then terminating at Park Street. South of Harvard, trains could go exit the tunnel and enter Elliott Yard. Elliott Yard is a maintenance facility yard constructed for the Cambridge Dorchester line, which this yard sits between North Harvard Street, Elliott Street, and Memorial Drive. This is a layover storage where trains could sit here, maintain, repair if they broke down, and general maintenance is done on the trains. Now also, a, a one-stop extension opened to the line in the year of 19... 
12, which trains could stop at stadium. Stadium is a singular platform constructed next to a loop track at Elliott Yard. This stop platform was created to serve passengers to the Harvard Stadium, although this was a limited station only, which was only opened during game days. Most all trains terminated at Harvard when stadium was closed. The Cambridge Dorchester line opened to the public on March 25th 1912. In 1915, the line was extended one stop to Summer Street and Winter Street where the line connected with the Orange Line. This stop was renamed in 1947 to Summer Washington Street. Then in 1967, the line, the stop was simplified to Washington. Finally, in 1987, Washington was renamed to Downtown Crossing, the station that we know today. In 1916, the line was extended one stop to South Station. In 1917, it was extended one stop to Broadway. In 1918, the line was extended one stop to Andrew. In 1919, the line was extended on surface level side by side with the old colony railroads one stop to Columbia, which was renamed to JFK UMass in 1978. What came next was the Dorchester Extension. This extension followed the rail right of way, which was formed by the Shawmut Branch Railroad in the year of 1870. In 1872, the Rail right of way was purchased by the Old Colony Railroad to connect their line at Harrison Square with the Dorchester and Milton Branch Railroad, which ran from the Old Colony at Neponset West to what is now Mattapan. The New York, New Haven, and Hartford Ra Railroad accomplished the Old Colony in operation of the branch but this line was discontinued in 1926 in construction of the Dorchester extension of the Cambridge-Dorchester line. In 1927, the line was extended to Savin Hill and terminated at Fields Corner. Finally, in 1928, the line was extended from Fields Corner to Shawmut and terminating at the present set terminal at Ashmont. South of Ashmont, the BER acquired land to construct the Codman Yard, which is a secondary layover storage for the Cambridge Dorchester trains to be stored. In 1932, another station was added between Park Street and Kendall. This station was called Charles, constructed above the Charles Circle traffic. In 1947, the Boston Elevated Railway became the MTA or the Metropolitan Transit Authority. Although this name was later changed in 1964 when the MTA became the newly formed MBTA, the Massachusetts Bay Transportation Authority. With this, the Cambridge Dorchester line became the red line. The color red was chosen because the line passes by Harvard University, which color scheme of red. On July 28, 1965, the MBTA signed a contract with the New Haven Railroad to acquire 11 miles 18 kilometers of the former Old Colony Main Line from Fort 
point channel to South Braintree in order to build the new rapid transit line along the space. The BTA hmm, hmm, called this the South Shore Extension. With this, the red line was extended from Andrew on surface level, passing crossing the Neponset River, making stops at North Quincy, Wallaston, and terminating at Quincy Center, which the line opened in 1971. In 1969, the T acquired the land from the Penn Central Dover Street Yards for $7 million to construct the new Cabot Maintenance Facility Yard located in South Boston. This is where the trains from now on would be stored, repaired, maintained, fixed if they break down, and general maintenance is now done at Cabot Yard, which replaced Old Elliot Yard in 1976. In March of 1980, the rail line was extended to one stop to its present set terminal, trains now terminating at Braintree. Also, the T opened another storage yard south of Braintree. Trains can also be stored at Cattegate Yard for a layover. In 1983, another stop opened between Braintree and Quincy Center, trains now stopping at Quincy Adams. In the 1970s, the T began planning on extending the red line north of Harvard further into West Cambridge, Arlington, and Lexington as to expand the line further. Now, the only problem with this extension was Harvard. Now, Harvard Station was constructed east-west oriented underneath Massachusetts Avenue underneath the triangular shape of Harvard Square. Now, the T wanted to extend the red line north on Massachusetts Avenue, although due to Harvard Station being an intersect in that direction, which would require half of the station to be demolished in the upcoming years. So heavy work required to be done in required the closing of Harvard. Now the Harvard bus tunnel also required to be closed because due to the construction of constructing a new station and closing the old passageways, the busway had to be moved south of Bradle Street, which is a five minute walk from Harvard Square. And this would delay a lot of passengers needing to catch the red line or getting on their bus. So with this, the T opened a temporary extension, one stop to Harvard Brattle. Harvard Brattle was constructed near the yard portal at Elliott Yard. This station had three tracks and two wood, wooden I two island platforms. This was a temporary extension to provide bus connections during the cl closure of the Harvard busway. Harvard Brattle was opened in 1979. In 1981, Harvard Station closed for the construction of the new Harvard Station, to which Harvard had to be demolished. So with this, another station was opened south of the original Harvard which was Harvard Holyoke. Harvard Holyoke is, is an upper and lower level two platforms which served as a temporary station until the new Harvard station is finished. 
Harvard Holyoke and Harvard Brattle was closed in 1983 after the constructed of the new Harvard. Also in 1967, Harvard Stadium was closed after the last season of football at the Harvard Stadium. The new rebuilt Harvard Station opened in the year of 1983. The rebuilt Harvard Station had a upper and lower level platforms which was six which could fit six car train sets. This station had red and white tiles, high ceilings, more entrance and exits, and a night and a ginormous waiting area in the center of the station. The new Harvard had elevators, some small shops, also a, a connector to the Harvard Busway, which reopened in 1985. Now what happened to the original Harvard? Now the original Harvard was destroyed except half of it remains to this day. When looking on the left, weighing the red line from Harvard to Central, you can see the original Harvard in its ruins. Now Harvard Holyoke was basically left abandoned and you can see it when looking on the Right. Harvard Brattle was demolished, same as Elliott Yard, which presently sits the John F. Kennedy School in that area. In 1984, the red line was extended up north to Porter and Davis. Now, the T did have plans to extend the red line north into Arlington and Lexington, although due to the residents of Arlington not wanting a train to be built there, so that's why the red line was extended west into Cambridge to its present set terminal at Alewife. In 1988, a second platform was added at JFK UMass for the Braintree branch. This allowed passengers who came from Braintree to drop off at JFK UMass or people to board at JFK UMass to go to Braintree. Now this sums up the history of the red line. Now let's focus on the rolling stock. The T 
from 1911 to 1912 purchased 40 steel motor cars manufactured by Standard Steel Car Company and 20 cars manufactured by Laconia Car Company. These cars had a design of a street car rather than a classic subway train. These cars were 69 feet long, 6 inches, 21.18 meters, had over buffers, and a large standing capacity. These cars weighed 85,900 pounds, 38,964 kilograms. These cars had three pairs of single sliding doors each side. 35 additional cars were purchased by the Press Steel Company in 1919, following by 60 more cars in 1928 from the Oscold Bradley Car Company. These cars were numbered 0600 to 0754. These trains ran on the Cambridge Dorchester line from 1912 through all the way to 1963, replaced all at once by a newer fleet. These cars were the longest subway fleet to be in service. After its retirement, all cars were scrapped. Cars numbered 0709, 0719, 0749, 0753, and 0754 was preserved to the Seashore Trolley Museum in Keenbunkport, Maine. The T in the 1960s purchased 92 married couples constructed by Pullman Standard from 1962 to 1963. These cars are called the 1400 series, which are rectangular prismed subway cars which are 69 feet long, 10 degrees wide, 12 feet tall, and weighed 71,000 pounds. These cars have Westinghouse and General Electric motors with air compression braking systems. These cars have 56 red plastic seats, 4 pairs of sliding doors each side. These cars were schemed dark blue on the bottom, white on the top half, and a blue roof with trims of gold paint on the front and back of the ends. These cars were colored this way to represent the Commonwealth of Massachusetts who helped funding of purchasing these cars. Now, cars number 01490 and 01491 had a different design. These cars were designed a bit curved which made them different from the other cars. Now anyways, these cars replaced the older fleet all at once in 1963. The 1400 series were purchased as married couples, meaning two cars are fused together which these cars can also be connected with other cars and separated. Now, a single car cannot operate without the second car, which two cars ha have to be coupled together for to operate. Now, now as for the South Shore extension, the T required cars for the new extension, so with this, the T signed a contract to Pullman Standard to purchase the 15 and 1600 series, which are constructed from 1969 to 1970. The 15 and 1600 series are aluminum bodied cars, which they got the name Silverbirds. These cars were 69 feet long and 120 degrees wide. These cars had three pairs of embodied doors each side. 
with upgraded traction signaling and better propulsion systems. These cars equipped with Westinghouse electrical motors, which these cars run with air compression braking systems, which release air when deboarding and leaving a station. The 50 and 1600 series had a fully functioning signaling system which these could operate on the green tree branch which all trains are required to have proper signaling which the 1400 series didn't have. Now the T purchased a total of 24 of the 1500 series and 52 of the 1600 series, 76 cars total. Now the 1500 series were for double cab single units, meaning a single car can operate by itself without the second car in which these cars have double cabs, meaning these cars can be operate, operated both on the front and the back. While the 1600 series were purchased as married couples, meaning that two cars are fused together and required the second car to fully operate. The 15 and 1600 series can couple together. These trains also had the ability to hold six car trains as three married couples or six single units. Yes. These cars also had newly improved bell chimes and better traction system systems. These cars made their first rent on December 11, 1969. From 1980 to 1983, the 1400 series were rebuilt in by the MBTA. With this, these cars were recolored to bright red on the bottom, white on the top half, and a gray silver roof, which makes it the classic red line paint scheme. The 1400 series were also given a signaling feature which these cars can now on operate on the brain tree branch. Also, the 15 and 1600 series were also rebuilt by the T. With this, these cars were also repainted the same way. A bright red cherry on the bottom half, white on the top half, and a gray silver roof. Now, all 76 cars were, well, 74 cars were rebuilt because cars number 01604 and 01605 collided between Charles MGH and Hirschby back in August 1975. 01604 and 01605 was later scrapped in 2011. The 1500 series had 63 seats installed and the 1600 series had 50, 64 seats installed. Now, the 1500 series ended up being converted from double cabs to single cabs as to create more space for seating. The 1500 series are still 
single units, but as practice, these operate as married couples with the 1600s. The T in the 1980s wanted to purchase more of the 15 and 1600 series from Pullman Standard. This is because the T during this time extended all station platforms from four car train sets to six car train sets so the T would now operate trains as six car train sets three married couples. Also for the Northwest L extension and the Southeast Braintree extension required more cars for the line. Now, Pullman was no longer accompanied by the 1980s and was sold to Bombardier. So with this, the T purchased 58 identical pairs of the 15 and 1600 series called the 1700 series built by UTDC from 1987 to 1989. These were numbered 01700 to 01757. These were purchased as single units, but always as practice, these operate as married couples. These can also train line couple with the 15 and 1600 series. The 1700 series had 62 seats installed and didn't have number plates like the 15 and 1600 series, but pretty much everything is identical to the 15 and 1600 series. Attention passengers, the next red line train to Lakewood is not approved today. The 1400 series, on the other hand, had a lot of problems. Now, the 1400 series still operated four car train sets to married couples, even though all station platforms were extended to six car train sets, three married couples. Now, Pullman didn't, didn't manufacture these trains to hold six car train sets, three married couples, and these were designed to only carry four car train sets to married couples. Also, these cars didn't have any air conditioning, so it would be very hot when riding these. Also, these cars suffered numerous failures such as mechanical and electrical problems and these ended up required replacement. So the T purchased the 1800 series built by Bombardier from 1993 to 1994. These cars are a new modern high teak which are constructed from a stainless steel body which prevented rusting and erosion. These cars have a quieter traction which, which is more improved, efficient and sustainable. These are equipped with general electric motors. The ATG series had two pairs of in-body doors each side. 
60 seats in the interior. Bell chimes with automatic voice announcements voiced by Frank Oblisky. The 1800 series had LED lighting, better seen in the tunnel, also LED board signs, which these could type in any stop name, and is better seen in the tunnel. Unlike the old county railroad signs on the 14, 15, 16, and 1700 series, the team purchased 86 cars numbered 01800 to 01885, which these were, were purchased as married couples, although they could not couple with the 14, 15, 16, or 1700 series. Next stop, Quincy Adams. The 1400 series were retired in 1994 after 31 years of service. Cars number 01450 and 01455 were preserved to the Seashore Trolley Museum in Keenbunkport, Maine in 1997, where these remain display and can be seen running during special events at the museum. Cars number 01469, 01470, 01477, and 01488 were converted to work motors while rest of the cars being scrapped by 1995. Bringing us to the present day in the 20th century, the 15, 16, 17, and 1800 series were running as normal, but many issues and factors began to show. Now, in 2006, cars numbers 01816 and 01817 got involved in a fatal accident which these two ended up being donated to the focus A F B Spring Training in 2021, 0-1608-0-1609 collided and ended up retiring from service in 2011. More accidents were occurred, such as the 2015 runaway train accidents. Also, 01602, 0602, 01632, 01633, 01642, 01643, 01653, 01650, 01650, 01750, 01751, 01752, 01753, 01754, 01755 got involved in accidents, derailments, which these cars ended up being taken out of service. And looking at the 15 and 1600 series, these have been in service since the 1960s, and these required replacement looking at their age. Now, the tea during this time was focused on replacing the old orange line cars. So, the T decided to purchase new cars for the red line. So, the T contracted CRRC, which is a new company in China, which stands for Changun Railways China. T contracted CRRC to purchase 252 cars numbered 1900 to 2151 to replace the 15, 16, 17, and 1800 series by 2024. The new CRRC 1900 series is a new modern IT constructed from a stainless steel body with larger in, in, embodied doors, which helped people with wheelchair and, and disabilities to enter. These, these cars also have quieter traction system with Melco Electrical. These cars have a signal tracker which is to track train from miles away, upgraded signaling, LED signs, LED lighting, bicycle air conditioning, red plastic seats, 
destination screen monitors. These cars have larger windows, larger doors, and also provide space for people with disabilities. These cars are more quieter, sustainable, and efficient. Now, due to the pandemic, it delayed of purchasing these cars, but the first cars entered service in February of 2021. As of 2024, 18 of these are delivered, 14 in service, with zero 1914s or 1915s or 1916 or 1917 in testing. And the plan is all 252 cars will be delivered by the end of 2027. As of now, 22 out of 24 of the 1500s are active. 38 out of 52 of the 1600s are active, 82 out of 86 of the 1800s are active, 54 out of 58 of the 1700s are active, and 14 of the 1900s are active. So this brings us to the present day, and thank you for watching. So see you next time.